I'm doing a review on the Noco Genius Wicked Smart Charger. I got this because I uh, have some deeply discharged uh, deep cycle batteries and some AGMs, uh, some wet cells and AGMs. And they're not holding much of a charge and uh, they're sulfated. And this unit is supposed to help with that for slightly sulfated batteries, the manual says. I, I googled it, I watched all the YouTube videos on it, there's not a lot of personal reviews of this thing, so I couldn't really figure out whether it really works or what people's experiences were. I read all the reviews on Canadian Tire and such on it, and they, most of them say it's good for maintaining, I haven't read a lot about success people had for sulfated batteries, so I figured instead of buying a <coughs> new $140 deep cycle battery, which is the cheapest wet deep cycle. I get a charger and see if I can restore a, a few of the deep cycles that I already have and see if I can get them going. This unit was 80 bucks from Canadian Tire, basically 100 bucks with tax. And so I, this is the G3500, the 3.5 amp uh, charging. And you see it does the 6 volt and 12 volt and it also does uh, has settings for small 6 volts and small 12 volt batteries so it's pretty versatile in terms of charging any sort of battery you'd want to charge if it's just for normal charging purposes so I mean it's a it's a nice fancy charger for any sort of uh, automotive or whatever charging um, <clears throat> you know topping up existing good batteries that you have and it does maintain you can plug this into your motorcycle leave it on all winter and it will maintain it and it will only charge if it needs to charge, which is nice. So that's a nice feature, and I'll probably use that for my motorcycle since generally I don't do anything with my motorcycle battery over the winter. I just let it sit there, which is not so good for it. Now there's a bunch of features on the back here. I'm uh, looking for the recovery mode there in the center, you see. That's the option for sulfation. Um, it's supposed to restore. Um, so badly sulfated or slightly sulfated batteries. So I, I have no idea if this will work or not, but I'll do some videos and, and show you what I'm attempting to restore, and uh, we'll see how it goes. And I go, I'll give you my review. All right, here's the final part to my re review of the Noco Genius G3500. I'll start with the uh, the disappointment. So I was trying to charge um, these 20 amp hour uh, sealed lead acid batteries which came out of uh, another project I got which was a um, illuminated power pack uh, generator basically a battery battery powered uh, 60 amp hour uh, inverter combination Anyways, in that were three separate sealed lead acid um, batteries. So I tried to charge them with my Noco Genius. And it didn't work. It went for, it did various things. It went up, right up to 100%, um, suggesting that the batteries were 100% full. And then when you took it off, it would shoot back down to, you know, 10 volts or whatever. And... I started tinkering with them, took all the caps off, and of course they were bone dry. So I filled them all up with water, kept charging it. Got to a point where the uh, Noco Genius just sat at 25% charging, charging, charging forever. So I think these batteries were well past their life uh, life cycle, their end of, end of age, um, past their expiry date. They were probably charged dry a few times, uh, which probably uh, completely wrecked uh, the batteries, so they wouldn't be recoverable anyways. And I guess I can't fault the Noco Genius G3500 for that, since they only claim to um, uh, improve the performance of slightly sulfated batteries. Uh, these would probably not... Uh, be considered slightly sulfated batteries. But in 
most cases, <clears throat> any battery charger would uh, improve the performance of slightly sulfated batteries if you bring them up to full charge and keep them at full charge. Um, and keep them that way, that will basically, uh, at minimum, limit the sulfation. And then if you have them on a solar charge controller, like that one or the another fancier one I have down in my chicken shed, it will utilize them and, and take them up to 15 volts, uh, you know, 14, 15, which um, that, that high voltage uh, is what uh, desulfates the batteries or, or assists in that. The other battery I had was the one down there, which you can't see, it's a... Uh, marine RV deep cycle 110 ba 10 amp hour battery. This is the uh, exact same battery as I have in my chicken shed doll, uh, like make and model uh, of battery, except this one's really old, came out of an old truck. It's been wrecked for a long time. Uh, so it's well sulfated, uh, you know, it was dry when I got it. It's completely wrecked, it won't take a charge. And the Noco Genius didn't help with that either. So, I might have been asking too much of it, I probably was, uh, but I thought I would take a chance and, and see if it could restore them, so that I didn't have to spend another $100, $140 on another deep cycle. So I ended up spending basically $100 including tax on this Noco Genius, which is really just a glorified, you know, standard battery charger. A lot better than that one if you can see it. This is just my old-fashioned big metal box, uh, 2 amp, 6 amp, 12 volt charger. And for all intents and purposes, it does all that I would need it to do. This cheap one from Canadian Tire will stop charging the battery once it's up to voltage. Um, and when it goes under voltage, it will charge again. Now this isn't really meant to be left on a battery. Um, there may be more intelligence to the uh, the genius smart charger in terms of keep uh, like trickle charging it because obviously this this unit wouldn't do trickle charge. But I'm probably not going to leave my genius on any of my batteries all the time, anyways. I don't find there's a need to. As long as you keep them, as long as you top it up every month or whatever, you should be fine. And in fact, I leave my motorcycle battery. Uh, I left it all winter and it was fine. Uh, I just did a top up now. Uh, now it, you know may may get another year or two out of it if you uh, keep trickle charging it to make sure it doesn't uh, you know wind down over the the winter enough that it starts sulfating. But you know or freeze. But as long as you keep it uh, well over like if you keep it fully charged, there shouldn't be a problem with the battery freezing anyways. So. That's the bad news. It didn't do what I kind of bought it to do. Uh, you know, it wasn't didn't fulfill the purpose for which I purchased it. Uh, it's a nice unit. It's compact. It's tiny. You can bang it around. It comes with uh, a couple alligator clips. You know, and that's well and good. So I can clip them onto my batteries as needed. And they have fancy LED lighting. You know, that's that's kind of cool. Eye candy. <laughs> If there was such a thing for a battery charger, and everybody likes to see more more detail as to you know how the thing's charging and what what it's doing and what stage it's at. What I didn't like about it was the manual. The manual is literally it's about that high, about the width of the charger, and about that wide. It's a it's a miniature manual. It tells you the most basic stuff. Uh, you know, there's a 6-volt mode, there's a 12-volt mode, make sure to pick the right kind of battery, AGM, uh, or a cold start, or normal for uh, standard uh, wet cell batteries. Um, it gives you some extra errors. Um, it gives you a few reasons why you would see in um, the error, the error LED link, uh, blinking. But then the uh, the back of it says, uh, you know, go download the PDF for the full manual. <coughs> so I did that. I got the full manual on my iPad. It doesn't give a lot more. It gives you uh, genius tips 
on each page, which I don't think the printed one does, the tiny printed one. But other than that, in terms of uh, solfation mode and stuff, which is probably the big reason why people get this, because uh, that's the feature that most of the other ones uh, don't have, only the more high-end ones, it, it all it says about it literally is um, that um, it will only come on if the genius thinks the battery could help uh, from that phase. Uh, except there's no indication here uh, that is doing it. So I mean, does it come on it? You know, when it when it's at the 25% charge? Does it? Uh, is it on when it's at 50%? Is it on from 25 through 75? You know when it, when is it pulsing the high voltage? I, I I have no clue. It doesn't indicate. The manual doesn't say. And in general, I mean, you're paying big bucks. You're paying a premium for a fancy case. Um, this thing that's called Genius uh, Wicked Smart. You know, and that has a, an atomic symbol on it, and uh, a bunch of fancy LEDs. You're you're paying big bucks for this stuff. And uh, the manual really doesn't go into detail which you would expect, like, wh I, I want to know about all the logic, you know, why is it so smart? What does it do differently? And it doesn't give you a lot of info for that. So, what's my review? I would suggest this is fine for trickle charging, you know, if you want a, a somewhat solid state, uh, you know, tiny uh, charger to go on your boat or something, and they do sell models like that, then fine, you know, you can screw this to your wall. I don't know that this is a lot better than my old certified charger. Um, it's smaller. Uh, does it do a lot more? Uh, not really. It's got a few more options, I suppose, in terms of 6 volt um, charging. But I think my certified will charge a 6 volt anyways. It's a dumb charger, so it doesn't detect the voltage of the battery. Whereas this is a smart charger, and if the voltage is less than uh, I think 10.5, it won't charge it on the 12 volt setting. So you have to put it down to the 6 volt. Well, that's not very smart because my certified couldn't care less whether it's 12 or 6. It assumes you're connecting it correctly and so it just starts charging at whatever it starts charging at. So, in some cases the uh, the dumb charger is ends up being smarter slash more useful anyways. Is it good for desulfating batteries? I would say not. Uh, the manual is limited in what they say about it. There's really no evidence backing it up. I've not seen any YouTube videos where personal guys have re re reviewed this and suggested that it really uh, restored their batteries. Uh, the reviews on Canadian Tire website and such don't really suggest that. It makes a great uh, maintainer. But why not get a battery tender? Or why not just plug in your certified Canadian Tire 2 amp, 6 amp charger once a month? Uh, it doesn't really help. It, this is fancy for people who want to pay the big bucks for a charger they think, uh, you know, it makes them feel good, makes them feel like uh, it's doing something more. Uh, but I don't know that it actually does. Um, it, it may sense, you know, uh, whether a, a battery is fully topped off at 14.7 volts or something, uh, whereas my certified maybe it only goes to you know 13 volts or 14 or something. But in the end, uh, a charged battery is a charged battery, and I don't know if it extends a life at all. Anyways, that's my review. Uh, I wouldn't suggest this unless you have money to burn. Uh, I could not find out any good reviews so I had to buy one and find it for myself and no it doesn't really help with uh, heavily sulfated batteries and the website certainly doesn't go to any length to stress that obviously they, they want to sell that as a feature anyways I would say overpriced only get one if you if it's on sale or you uh, have the money to burn uh, otherwise this old beat up charger ends up doing more in more cases and is all you need and you can get one of these for 20 or 30 bucks and especially if you get one second hand you can probably get one free from a you know uh, Kijiji or something so that's it